You will know that I have not been backwards in coming forward in my criticism of a documentary made with uh, New Zealand On Air or uh, Journalism Fund Money, a documentary called Fire and Fury. An hour-long diatribe and piece of propaganda against everyone involved in that occupation of Parliament. A cookie-cutter, one-size-fits-all uh, polemic broadcast made by longtime journalist Paula Penfold and others like, uh, I think, Terence Taylor involved in it. A documentary, and I use the term bloody loosely, that used tricks of camera and editing and non-factual filmmaking to create the impression that the country was awash with Nazis and white supremacists, even though more than half the people down at the um, protest were sort of Maori or Pacific Islanders, um, and painted a very negative picture of the protest at Parliament, the occupation of Parliament. It was an amazing documentary made with your $200,000 plus of your money in which Paula Penfold um, tweaked the rules of journalism, and that was that you could... Uh, Criticise, bag, and bag people in a documentary. Be selective about what of their public quotes they used. And you didn't need to give them a right of reply. Why? Because they were such evil Nazis. So, like, Three Waters tweaks democracy and Willie Jackson wants to tweak democracy. Paula Penfold uh, and the people at Stuff, naturally, took your taxpayer's dollar and tweaked the rules of filmmaking and journalism. Um, interesting thing was I made those criticisms and then I got accused personally on a number of different so-called media forums by Paula Penfold of being Alex Jones and inciting hatred and violence against journalists. Funny thing was Paula Penfold and her cohorts never gave me a right of reply either. And I invited Paula and I invited anyone associated with the Fire and Fury documentary to come on the program and live and have a discussion, none of them so far have had the balls to do so. So I was really interested when here at the platform we got an email from a group of people making another documentary uh, about the days of that protest and what went on there, all right? Oh, don't forget too, when the protest was on uh, and before we were on here, the platform sent down and, and we commissioned a survey to get some facts about the people who, who were down at Parliament. Uh, but I, we get this email yesterday from a group of people saying we wouldn't mind some publicity for our documentary about the protests called River of Freedom. And obviously a play on words for River of Filth, which of course is what a Labour MP said about the people who were at uh, the protest. And look, I'm pretty cynical. It's not like we don't get a lot of letters and people say, here's a really big story, you should cover this. But I went online and I looked at sort of the teaser or the proposal film that these people had made to get interest. And because they're not sucking on the taxpayer's tip, they want funding to make this movie and they need about 150 grand. I looked at it and I thought, geez, that actually looks really high quality. It looks good. It looks a damn sight more professional and has more journalistic integrity in the 10 minutes I watched than the hour that I paid for through my tax dollars with Fire and Fury. So I got hold of the people making that movie and I've invited them on the show this morning. A very warm welcome to River of Freedom director Gaylene Burns and the movie's producer, Jared uh, Conan. Welcome both of you uh, to the platform. It is lovely to have you with us. We got you both loud and clear. Hello, Sean. Hi, Gaylene yeah. here. Yeah, nice and Jared, we got the you there. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, great intro. Um, yeah, I don't Sorry, know bit of a rave, but I wanted to give people. <laughs> I wanted to give people some context because um, you guys yeah. do need one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make this movie. You are not going to get a government handout, clearly. And, uh, but I've got to say, I was just so impressed by what I saw yesterday. Gailin, I haven't talked to you yet. I spoke to Jared on the phone yesterday. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what other projects you've been involved in? Um, the last picture documentary I made was also about a, a protest. Um, it was called Seven Rivers Walking Heidi Mariri. And um, it was a group of 
people in Canterbury organising protest walks along the rivers of Canterbury. We were concerned about the quality of the water waterways. So um, we, yeah, so I made that. We got a little bit of money from the Film Commission to finish it off after we had a fine cut already made. And um, yeah, it did really well. We independently um, distributed it around the country and you know, it was a pretty good box office return considering we were just doing it ourselves. And um, I've also worked for 30 years in the film and television industry. And to be honest, I've probably paid my mortgage off with New Zealand on your money. So. Okay, <laughs> so, and this is the interesting thing. Would you describe yourself in any way as a Nazi or a white supremacist? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely. I I really appreciate the uh, um, uh, the survey that you did in the at Parliament because I'm definitely a, I was a, I was a Green um, Labour voter. In fact, the majority of people at that par- at that protest were uh, Green Labour voters. They were overrepresented, um, uh, believe it yeah. or not, mm. from, from from the survey stuff that we yeah, did. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Really important. That well, you it did just that. seemed to me yeah. we needed some facts rather than. I don't know, fear and hatred in it. Mm. Um, yeah, I know. Galing, do you think, and as part of the motivation for making River of Freedom, that our news media, and it's a media I've been part of for most, well, I'm the vast majority of my life, do you think New Zealanders have been given through, if you like, traditional channels, a really clear picture of what happened at Parliament? Uh, absolutely not. No, um, the the pro-choice vaccine injured voice has been silenced. It's been diminished and it's been ignored. Um, and so I, I'm completely concerned about that. I think uh, in 20 years, if we look back, you know, as a historian looking back, that voice could completely disappear if we're not able to tell that story. So, um, so my. Um, reason for going there and concern was to make sure that that voice is um, gathered as a doc, you know, as a documentarian. That's what I do. I'm not a journalist. Mm. I just go and talk to people and listen to people and we recorded it on camera and there were, we caught up with a lot of other people who were doing the same thing and we all, you know, formed a collective. Mm. And, and i got to say, that that's the to. thing that struck me yesterday. I was sitting in my office here, kind of transfixed, because the very nature of where you put a camera changes and a very powerful movie and film um it engages all the senses and it's not necessarily the words it is the perspective you see through your eyes and it takes you there mainstream mm. news media coverage was shot from one side of those barricades yep. and even the other day when brian tamaki and his people marched there all the tv and said uh, and mainstream media cameras were literally inside the parliamentary compacts looking down what struck me about what I was seeing um, in the teaser thing you put out yesterday, you're right in, in amongst it. You are yeah. there. You're not looking at the protest from the outside. It takes you inside it, which gives you a completely different perspective and I think a more real expect, uh, um, uh, perspective. Um, it also that, seemed to be there was a lot of footage. So have you managed to get footage that you haven't necessarily shot and you've collated it together? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we've got had quite a few different camera operators uh, working and I've also um, been pulling in a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, live stream camera cell phone people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, I've, I've been get, we've been getting a lot of footage. We probably have the most significant collection of footage in the country. Yeah. Um, did but, um, did no one from staff it, it, ever I approach you for that? Did no one from staff, Paula Penfold, never approach you to access any of that footage for her documentary? Um, no, of course not, no. <laughs> We've been under the radar. But yeah, I have to say it was hard won. Like, and, yeah. and all good documentaries, it's all about access and about yeah. getting into the, these communities. But we had to work hard. Like every, uh, every 10 minutes, we'd have people coming up saying, who are you with? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> and so we would re- have to explain. Look, we're trying. We're trying to tell your story. Yeah. We're trying to. We're, be- we're here for you to listen to you. And then they would relax and go, "Oh, okay, all right." Well, and yeah, then but really, they, they should have been cool enough to let anyone film there, shouldn't they? It was a public sp- space. Well, no, it's because uh, trust has disappeared. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So they did not trust media. Yeah. Because they saw the continuous you know, diminishing of the voice. Yeah. Yep. Gaylene, if you could stay on the line, I want to come to you now, Jared, because as the producer, 
you're like the money sure. guy, right? You've got to make the deal work. Um, and you're yeah, the guy some, who loses yeah. his sleep at night. Um, yeah. <laughs> how much money do you need to make a documentary like this? I know Paula Penfold's thing cost us, the taxpayer, 200 grand or more. What sort of money do you need to take this project from what the five, ten minute uh, teaser you've made, which is still very, very good in its own right, into what, uh, what an hour long doco or a 90 minute film? Yeah, so we're um, we're putting together a 90 minute feature length uh, documentary that we're planning to put into theatres around the country. Yeah. So we're going to do a, a roadshow trip with it and you know, the, the audience is out there. So we're looking, you know, we need to raise 150,000. You know, we have a fundraising page set up which has started crowdfunding and you know, been hugely successful already, but we are only 10% of the way there. So we've, we've received 15,000 from the community. So that's all we've got to work with at the moment, and we're putting that to, um, to you know, to all the um, costs that are already are accumulating. But to put a whole documentary together, I would say, you know, in the realms of the 300,000 isn't out of the question, but we have already shot. We've covered all of that. We donated our time. So you're you know, kind of post-production now, aren't you? In distribution yeah, we're and in stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're in editing at the moment. We're um, you know we've got a um, great editor on board, and Gaylene, you know, they're ploughing through that um, as much as they can. And you know, then we're into the sound mix and you know music composers, and then we've got to do picture finishing and yeah. sound finishing. And it's 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 you know it's a it's a long hard road. It's an uphill thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, we're we know where we sit in relation to government funding. Um, you know, well, well where do you on, sit? Because I'd say you should go well, along to New Zealand on air or the PIJF and say, geez, if you can give 200 grand for that piece of crap fire and fury, why not flick some money our way? Oh, yeah, exactly. We plan to. And, um, you know, Gaylene will speak to this in a moment. We have, um, we've started um, approaching them and having discussions, um, but it's, you know, we, we haven't um, pursued them to the, you know, to Can the Can I be honest, Gaylene? And, I think you're pushing brown stuff uphill. They are never going to give well, you an ounce of taxpayer money. Here's the thing, Sean. I think we should try, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that because then I can have at the end and the credits all the people that rejected us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the way to get money, I don't know if you know, out of the New Zealand on air, is you, you have to, you know, you have to do a lot of work. You have to put in a proposal, but you have to have a platform. And um, so our struggle is to get a platform because all the Hey, you can broadcast it. You can stream. You've got an app. You can broadcast. You can put us as the platform. Well, thank you. Okay. You need a broadcaster. <laughs> you got one. Okay, good yeah. on you. <laughs> Done. So now you, uh, now, now you and I together, we can put in a proposal to New Zealand on air. You register, you know, with yeah. Eric, yeah. Ever, the New Zealand on air platform, and we can ask for money and then see what happens. Excellent. I, I don't know how we're regarded as a media organ, but we are. We've got listeners. We've got a platform. We've got a brand. Yeah. Why not? Why the hell not? They totally fund well, um, other documentaries on similar platforms. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, that's what happened with stuff. That's how they did it. They, yeah. had, they were their own our, platform. I'll, I'll be honest. Our yeah. problem is that we would never take government money if we were required to fulfil any... if there were any strings attached from the government yeah. as to our editorial position or the way we run our company. No, and that's yeah. our position as well, Sean, um, and that's kind of one of our, um, you know, the things we talk about often, you know, we will not, um, you know, be changing our perspective on the um, on the piece that we're putting out, on the film that we're making, because it's really important that we stay true to the voices that we've captured. And as Gaylene will speak to, it's about balancing out our voice from inside the protest that we present to you know, the world. It's not so much that we're there to counter everybody else's story. We're telling our story, and, and we have to stay true to that. And, not, and when you know, when you get funding, you know, there's you know, people have opinions about what they want to see that funding go towards. Mm. So we've got to be very careful how we um, proceed with all of this. Yeah. Uh, Jared, I have to ask you too, would you have considered yourself prior to sort of COVID, prior to the protest? Uh, I mean, are you a political no. person? Uh, are you a Nazi? Are you no. a white supremacist or a misogynist or um, a white beater or whatever? I am I'm none of the above. Um, and and even to the, the first question, I didn't consider myself politically active 
um, at all, really, before um, the whole COVID situation unfolded and became uh, politicised, in my opinion. You know, the uh, you know, I was you know, happy bumbling along and putting my vote in, as, as as a lot of us did at the protest, Labour Greens, and I believe that they supported my, um, my, my, my view on the world, and I thought that was the best way forward. But it became pretty um, apparent pretty quickly when there was a change in policy around the whole you know, vaccine mandate situation and um, that you know, my uh, personal choices weren't being uh, considered and I was no longer able to work in my industry, which was pretty, um, I have to say, heartbreaking. Um, and, you know, and, and it did um, you know, define how I was going to move forward in, in life because you know, suddenly I had, you know, I came from a very, you know, uh, well-paid position in the film industry as an international um, screen producer to not being able to go to work. And so I had to sit back and take stock of everything. And it did end up in us selling our home, you know, Sean, to be honest. We mm. had to sell, we had to leave Wellington, and um, that, that, that's the fallout. That's what happened. But, Jared, I looked at that, you know, and both of you, I looked at that teaser you made... <sighs> You didn't have a preachy, judgy voiceover. You just had footage of real time. You had some music for continuity and stuff. But it's not like I'm watching... I watched five or ten minutes of footage made by angry people who want to, I don't know, hang politicians or overthrow democracy. It seemed, I don't know, far more genuine than that. Yeah, I, I mean, that was always the intent as well. And we need to make it accessible. Um, you know, we, we, we want a broader audience than just, you know, as the, the colloquial term of the echo chamber. Mm. Um, we do need to speak to our people and the people at the protest and, you know, and, you know, put their voice forward. But we also want to engage others as well. And, but there are bigger questions that will be posed in the documentary. It's not going to be all just, you know, let's have a nice walk in the park together and, yeah. you know, and sing happy songs. You know, Gaylene has got some really um, strong questions that we've, um, we're, we're putting together. And as I said, the, mm. what started out as an observational you know, piece around the protest is becoming, you know, yeah. starting well, to take I was a really, bit I was really yeah. surprised some major stories or developments there. And I'll just have one example. We found out when we looked in, and sound cannon were used for the first time in New Zealand on the last day of that protest. I didn't even know mm. our police had them. And they were deployed against people and they're a very controversial crowd, crowd control device. They're banned in some states in the United States. But they were turned on people that final day of the protest. And I was quite amazed at that. And I was amazed that there was no stories about it in our media. And no one thought that was a big deal. You know, tasers came into this country. It took years and all sorts of coverage. But the sound cannon, oh, no problem. Look, I'm getting some texts through from people. Um, Sean, where would... Where would be where would the River of Freedom documentary be allowed to be shown, uh, even if it gets funding? Asked Debbie. Um, can you guys answer that for us? Um, yeah, I mean it's, it won't have a problem being shown at all. It's not, um, yeah. There's no. It's not going to be of and you know preaching. It's not going to be saying anything that's illegal. Um, you know, we're still allowed to, you know, document the, the facts of what happened and what people's opinions are. So, we, I mean, we will be going to theatres with it. And if there are theatres that won't take it in the local area, then we will just go and um, put it on in a community hall. You know, we'll, we'll pr get our own projector and our own screen and, you know, and sell our tickets to, the, to it that way. But I'm pretty sure the exhibitors will be keen to show it. Um, you know, they're in business. They want to sell tickets. And, you know, there are a lot of people who want to see this film. Yeah. Um, Gayling, I want to actually just go back and ask you the same question I asked Jared. Were you, sounds like you were a bit political, you were greeny, you were save the planet, and a bit of tongue of defender were thrown in before the protest. How did the experience or has the experience changed your view of New Zealand and the political context in which you live? Uh, yeah, it has been a, a bit of a radical shift for me. Um, I've it's really opened my eyes to um, some of the hypocrisy in the Green Party and I, I'm particularly upset with them calling me a neo-Nazi. <laughs> uh, you know, I listened to James Shaw. Have they done that Mara. directly to you, Gaylene? 
they, they slanted the entire um, protesters as, you know, grifters and neo-Nazis. You, you know, just listen to, to James Shaw's speech. I think it was on the 3rd of March in Parliament. Um, and, and just their unwillingness to engage, to talk. I actually even called a Green MP because I was thinking maybe a Green MP will be someone who can come and talk to us. Someone who, you know, I think who was really great. It was a guy who had done a lot of work with regenerative farming. I'm a farmer as well. And I thought, well, he can come down. There's a lot of organic people here. And, um, yeah, and it was just, oh, no, but they're all right wing down there, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I feel betrayed by the Green Party. So I won't be voting for them again. Yeah. Hey, guys, uh, look, an amazing number of texts coming through and pledges of money. Um, so let's deal with that. If someone does want to make a contribution, Jared uh, and Gaylene, where can they send money? So we've oh, we set have up a... a um, oh, you go, Gaylene. Oh, well, we, yeah, we've set up a crowdfunding site, which has been really simple and really fantastic platform called buymeacoffee.com yep. slash freedom film okay and, um, and we'll put that yeah, up so on our website right. and we'll throw it out oh, through our social you. we really appreciate and we'll that also put a link to them struggling to <laughs> yeah. get, get we'll them. also put We're a link struggling up. to hold on to editors yeah we'll put up a link to this little this tester teaser docker you made if people want to do that right now and i can tell you what from the text value i'm getting people do where can they find it's on youtube is it river of freedom yeah, yeah that's right YouTube, it's on youtube it's on and Facebook. the and I was just going to say the um, the fundraising link is on the YouTube um, page as well, so you can sort of all find it there. And as Galen said, there's, we've got Facebook, we're on Vimeo, we're on Rumble, and we're on Telegram as well. Mm. Uh, guys, it has been fascinating uh, talking to you. A and I'd like to ask you, is this the first maybe of many docos? Because it sounds like you're in a good zone. A and we've been talking this morning about this issue of RV Yemeni, and the fact that our police seem to have specifically targeted him to keep him out of the country because of his political views. It seems to me you could make a full-time career of looking into these issues and making good movies and yeah. unbiased <laughs> movies about it. Yeah, I've got, I've got a few little horror films to make on the side as well, um, Sean, that we, but um, the, um, the uh, yeah, it, it is interesting because the you know as, uh, you know speaking to organisations like the Free Speech Union who want to do more coverage of their um, you know th their projects, the Avi Yemeni story yeah you know, is, is fascinating. I've been following it from the beginning. Um, you know, just I, I do follow a lot of um, different media outlets to what I call you know test the you know, test the, the temperature mm. of the nation. Yeah, you know, under, understand what's being said and what's being shared, and some of it's you know highly. Uh, questionable in, in many respects but yeah. from, from all sides as well I say that it's not just mm. you know, uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, we're we're in a really interesting time and you know we're finding you know some great rhythm in what we're doing you know Gailey and myself and our other producing partner um, Julian Arahanga and you know there are some really um, you know intriguing developments that are coming out of the beehive and you know the interactions with media and that's kind of one of the you know the core um, uh, ideas in our film as well it was very much around the protest was it was the intersection of you know the people the parliamentarians and the police and um, yeah. unfortunately the you know the parliamentarians never turned up to the party because but, they um, had convinced themselves and the media had convinced themselves that you were all Trumpists and you were going to storm the capital, hang them all, and have a revolution. Yeah, and and uh, and, I, and I, yeah, and and, and uh, I won't deny that there were people who were who were out there saying that, but they were a minority and they were not the um, intent of the protest. Yeah. So you know, and that's kind of what we want to you know, we want to support getting that out there for people to make their own decisions yeah. as well. You know, it's like hey, we need yeah. all voices out. There. Guys, I'm out of time. I could talk to you for much longer, and I thank you so much for your time today. I wish you well. We will be in touch about the platform helping where we can, uh, and good luck with it. I'm sure, actually, um, you're going to find there are a lot of people who are into, into what you're doing and do want to watch a good documentary on the parliamentary uh, occupation. 
Uh, that, folks, was Gailing Bird's uh, Burn and Jared uh, Conan. They are the uh, director and producer of a documentary being made without your money or without your tax dollars at the moment called River of Freedom rather than River of Filth. Um, go on YouTube and have a look for that. We'll get some links up for it on the platform site. Uh, and how interesting, how interesting to see there is some blowback against uh, the taxpayer propaganda that most of us are, are um, in one way or another subjected to.